The Battle of the Standard in 1138 was a significant battle that changed the borders of England and Scotland for 20 years. The Scottish King David kept Carlisle in his possession and his son Henry would pay homage to King Stephen for the English lands granted to him. The peace deal kept Scotland out of the looming civil war as Robert, Earl of Gloucester, was preparing to renounce his oath to King Stephen and join his sister, Empress Matilda, in France. The relationship between King Stephen and Robert was a complicated one, as Robert was the eldest bastard child of King Henry I, and what we can tell from the sources is that both father and son had a positive rapport with each other. Robert was also present at his father's deathbed and carried out the task of returning King Henry's body to England to be buried at Reading Abbey, whereas King Stephen was sailing back to England to be crowned king. So imagine Robert's shock upon learning that King Stephen had taken the throne of England as both men had sworn to uphold King Henry's wishes of choosing his daughter, Empress Matilda, as the new monarch. With King Stephen in charge, Robert had a difficult decision to make as one of the most powerful and wealthy landowners in England, King Stephen would need to maintain a good, if not formal, relationship with Robert. But, on the other hand, Robert had sworn an oath to support Empress Matilda as Queen, and doing so now, with Stephen as King, would be seen as treason, which would lead to his lands and titles being stripped from him, making him and his family destitute. During the first year of King Stephen's reign, Robert had begrudgingly sworn fealty as King Stephen's position was secure, but over the next two years, with the Scots invading and rebel barons testing the power of the monarchy, Robert moved around his vast estates in the West Country, feigning that his lands needed attending to, a ploy to avoid travelling with the king and assisting him. Yet when King Stephen landed in Normandy in 1137, Robert did eventually join him, but stayed in Normandy while King Stephen returned to England. Robert's decision to stay in Normandy raised suspicions, as during King Stephen's visit to Normandy, his forces skirmished with Geoffrey Plantagenet, Count of Anjou, before agreeing to a peace treaty near the end of the year. By 1138, King Stephen had multiple problems in England alone. The Scots had invaded the north, and rebel barons were causing issues in the south. And by May 1138, Robert rescinded his homage to King Stephen. Robert finally took the opportunity to side with his sister. I don't believe there's a single reason for him renouncing his homage. One source by the chronicler William of Malmesbury gives one reason that King Stephen had arranged to kill Robert by ambush, but this is the only source that mentions this event, yet Robert certainly went to great lengths to burn any bridges with King Stephen, as Robert issued a diffiditio, which was a proclamation renouncing one's oath on the terms that the liege lord had done a disservice towards said vassal, and that the reasons were justified. When the news reached Empress Matilda, she must have felt elated to hear the news, as she had been fighting for the crown only with the support of her husband for the past two years. So now, with her half-brother supporting her, along with his considerable wealth and experience, Empress Matilda's chances of being crowned Queen of England wasn't a far-off idea. With Robert's defection, England was now in a state of civil war. Soon the nobles of England would have to pick a side, the rightful female designated heir or a close male relative who promised stability and order. It didn't take long for Empress Matilda and her husband, Geoffrey Plantagenet, Count of Anjou, to gather their armies and march towards Caen. But the Chateau de Felles, a castle that was William the Conqueror's main command centre, was blocking access to Caen. The Plantagenet army besieged the castle, but failed to capture it, and pulled back to regroup. Rather than waste any more time, Empress Matilda moved around the castle and carried on towards Caen. Back in England, King Stephen was quelling each rebellion as quickly as they appeared, and was rapidly making progress in claiming Robert's holdings, as his only castle at Bristol resisted King Stephen. But, as quickly as King Stephen put one set of rebels down, another group would rise up, 
In Shrewsbury, a revolt caught the king's attention, as the commander of the city, William Fitz Allan, had declared for Empress Matilda. William was a relative to Robert through marriage, so his loyalty was secure. When King Stephen arrived, he refused to come to terms. For King Stephen, his next actions proved he had hardened as he showed no mercy to defenders after taking the castle. William had escaped, but the rest of the defenders were hanged, all 93 in total. King Stephen was appearing to look and act like his predecessor. The mercy he showed to the rebels at Exeter would not be shown now. But, one after the other, castles and forts declared support for Empress Matilda. Castle Carey, Harpertry, and Dunster, to name a few. With King Stephen travelling around the Midlands of England, he left his wife, Queen Matilda, to organise the defence of Dover. By 1139, King Stephen arrived at the town of Ludlow and was quickly besieging the castle there. He was accompanied by Henry of Scotland, now an ally after the Treaty of Durham. During the siege, King Stephen saved Henry from being hooked on a crow, a type of siege weapon which is best described as a large fishing rod with a huge hook on the end. Once the siege was concluded, most of Robert's lands were now in King Stephen's control, as Robert was still in Normandy, preparing with Empress Matilda. Most of the support in England for the Angevin cause was nearly extinguished, as King Stephen had demonstrated his tactical and siege warfare capabilities, a trait useful for a medieval king. With Bristol now the last stronghold to be captured, King Stephen turned his attention to more administrative matters in England. For the past 30 years, the day-to-day -day running of England was handled by several bishops, as the position of Justicia of England was hound by Roger of Salisbury, one of King Henry's new men, who didn't belong to an aristocratic family. Roger is described as one of the most ableist and administrative-minded figures during this period of English history. He was also a powerful landowner, holding several castles. The main issue for King Stephen was the bishop's loyalty to him, as even the chroniclers of the time recorded that the bishops were too powerful for their assigned stations, which needed to be addressed, as if they opposed King Stephen and backed Empress Matilda in the upcoming war, King Stephen could find himself dethroned, as the bishops had sworn an oath to proclaim Empress Matilda as heir during the reign of King Henry, and as Bishop Roger owned Devise's castle, once described as the most beautiful fortress, and, at the time of recording this video, Devise's castle can be yours for a cool three million pounds. Bishop Roger would make a powerful enemy if he switched sides. King Stephen had enough evidence to strip the bishops of their position, as some had plotted with Angevin sympathisers, despite some accusing King Stephen of acting with little evidence. In June of 1139, a meeting was held in Oxford to discuss the issues King Stephen had with the bishops. The bishops brought some of their men from their own households, and before the meeting even began, a fight broke out over the lodgings, with several dying during the brief skirmish. King Stephen's reaction to this bloodshed was to condemn the bishops for breaking the peace. For compensation, King Stephen demanded that they hand over their castles. The bishops refused and were arrested. William of Malmesbury states that this act of violence was orchestrated by King Stephen, but other sources contradict William's accounts, so we have no definitive proof of who started the brawl. Both Roger of Salisbury, his son Roger Lepoa, and Alexander of Lincoln, the elder Roger's nephew, were arrested. Bishop Nigel had yet to reach Oxford, and when the news reached him of the arrest, he fled to devise his castle, where he planned to rebel against the king. King Stephen gave chase, bringing with him the arrested bishops, and threatened to hang the younger Roger in full view of the castle garrison. Only the intervention of Roger's mother, Matilda of Ramsbury, stopped his hanging, as she agreed to capitulate to King Stephen's demands. 
For his actions of arresting the bishops, King Stephen was condemned by the English clergy, as his own brother Henry of Boulogne spoke out and demanded that the freedom of the church was paramount. The arrests of the bishop would yield serious consequences in the future for King Stephen, but for now he was in control of his own administration, and soon appointed positions to his loyal supporters. The three bishops were released and resumed their duties as clergymen. For Bishop Roger, the mistreatment during his imprisonment took a toll on his health, and he died later in the year. His son fades from all our sources afterwards. Bishop Alexander would stay loyal to King Stephen and would sponsor several chroniclers, including Geoffrey of Monmouth and Henry of Huntingdon. As for Bishop Nigel, he would revolt against King Stephen at a later date. With the bishop's affair now dealt with, King Stephen's next problem would land on the 30th of September, as Empress Matilda landed in England with her half-brother Robert of Gloucester. The Empress was back to claim her rightful throne. 